Yes, Jakarta has everything, even, even weddings by the sea. And yes, homosexual wedding photography directors. Lesbians, as seen on TV, who are normal. And as the sign says, so are their other fellows of preference, also citizens of Indonesia. Indonesia's most famous warrior or transsexual, as seen here on her TV show, uh, eponymously named Dorcha, which was long running. She's only just stepped down to it to devote more of her time to running her orphanage, similar to Oprah Winfrey. Um, had an adoring and devoted audience, as seen here in another grab. Indonesians also love their children, and they love taking them to shopping malls. And they also love toy, motorised toy animals. This mall, however, does not allow motorised toy animals into it. It does allow children as long as they're well behaved. This is the neighbours. Rather like Venice, as one observer commented. The orange poles were provided by an international organisation in time of flood. The citizens can hold on to the ropes. Or, when it's not flooding, they can put their washing on it, which is done here. The, on the left are the toilets. And here are some of the ladies who might have been doing some of the washing using the toilet and some of the children swimming in the river. But there's always time for a smile, except for these guys caught out in a traffic outing. And this bloke, who's a bit bemused by it all, the way these humans go on. Into all this and more, this man, seen here, <laughs> replete <laughs> at a feast at a street side restaurant in Jakarta. Yes. Into all of that and more, he sent this man. <laughs> and that woman followed that man for reasons of her own. <laughs> Let me compare, which is where Roderick comes from. 28 million? Well, he's an artist, so he figured he had everything that was needed to survive in this new environment. We have concluded that he was the man. We sent him here, Institute Kuseni in Jakarta, which is the Jakarta Arts School, the government arts school. It's the only one in all of Jakarta. It's a nice place for artists. Here's something to warm your hearts. Church, mosque and art. Lovely, isn't it? <laughs> now, here's some of the practical facilities and on the right, that smiling man with the glasses is sitting up the back there. He's the head of the Jakarta Arts Council, which is the government-funded body that organises stuff in Jakarta. Probably the only one, or one of the few, that's not private. So, uh, Firman, Firman Iksan, please. That's him there. <laughs> If you would like to have your head rearranged the way Roderick's has been, talk to him. <laughs> then I took him to where I live, my kampung or village, which is right in the centre of Jakarta, yet nevertheless is a village. It's much quieter than the other places. Here's some of the kids in the lapangan or field where in the centre of the uh, village. Yeah, a little tanir in her box and out of it. And this is their, oh, and Gaby, her older sister, my neighbours. And this is their grandmother's food cart, which provides the major source of income for the, I think, three extended families that live in there, in their house. Oh, and the North Korean embassy nearby, other neighbours. Into all of this, Rod Roderick seemed rather pleased. Goodness knows why. <laughs> Over to you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Um, 
Is it okay if I stand here? Is that enough light? No? Yeah. Stick, go back in your box. Yeah, so um, those that don't know, my work is down in the corner, the little cart that you see there. Um, I was going to begin by talking about where I come from, but I think Rob's done a pretty good job with that. Thanks, Rob. Um, and yeah, so what I will talk about is um, a bit of intent behind uh, what I, my thoughts around the work and... Um, yeah, just a bit of what happened and I guess and it's been great to have those speakers up before me that give a bit of a view of the you know, anthropological uh, point of view and, and stuff like that which is um, very similar to what, what happened with when I went over there with the video camera and stuff like that. So, um, where to begin? Um, yeah, so as most, most people have noticed that people have come from the city and gone to country. I've gone from country and gone to a massive city of Jakarta which um, has a bit of a fascination uh, with shadows and um, that kind of interests me in the spirit world. And coming from Leonora and Martin Mooden where the um, spirit world is, is much more real than, than cities, it was, um, I found that um, actually quite familiar. Um, there's not many photos here. So I'll just go, go through them. Um, that's another food cart. And as I was over there, we also um, had the opportunity to do a collaboration. This is um, joint work with um, the artist on the left. is an airbrush artist. His name's NG. And um, this is uh, almost a portrait of uh, a bit like Rob, I think, because he's known in Jakarta as the white monkey. <laughs> Hannah Mann. So he's a, a good a good god. Um, he helps out uh, the king, and does that's good that's good basically. Yep, fights off bad people and stuff like that with his hordes of um, monkeys. So yeah, and I wanted to tell you a little story about this um, doll's head. We went to a uh, one of those big shopping centres, but it was um, much like the size of that big flash one, but instead of um, being very westernised, it was still had you know, little shops inside that big uh, shopping centre, so it was just run by you know, just other people. So it was where the Indonesians, um, the, the uh, middle class, lower class Indonesian would do their shopping. And um, we're looking for this doll, because I, I knew I wanted to put a doll's head on this monkey, because we'd seen a monkey dancing on the street with his doll's head on, and it kind of was a good representation of of the Jakarta, what it felt like what Jakarta was going through, this you know, old and new coming into Western um, society more and it was taking on this new identity and I was interested in identity. So I was looking for this doll's head, this little white one and um, we found this on top of a cupboard in one of those stalls, we found this little um, doll and my whole wife and I um, got it down and we saw it and there was 70,000 um, it was here and um, we thought, well, gee, that's a bit expensive. So um, we took it to this lady and you know, we, we tried to ask her, you know, is this the right price? And she didn't speak in English. So she went and got her, probably a niece or something, who's just quite, you know, you could tell when she came up to her, she's very strong, very direct, and no, yep, that's the price, no, no, no less. And um, so we thought, okay, and um, are you sure? Because we could see that it had a mounted, bit of a mounted face and a mounted eye, but um, because we're holding it down, um, the dice were closed and she's all like, and she's no, no, that's the price cut and we're trying to butter a bit of it and um, there's only a certain amount of preparation you can do but it's very uh, universal the way someone reacts when they, a little doll's head pokes his head up and one eye is sticking, sticking out and one eye is not and so she lifted this doll's head up and pointed at her and this, she kind of opens up with this kind of look like this and this poor lady and she almost fainted so <laughs> and then that kind of Everyone was laughing, and that was it was worth the seventy thousand anyway. We ended up paying full price. It was <laughs> worth the laugh. She still wouldn't give in. Yeah. <laughs> so this um, general theme of 
what's going on. You know, I think as anthropologists, anthropologists, no, something like that. Those people who go around and um, you know ask questions and try and collect data, they have a, a starting point, and I guess what we're doing is finding out or comparing it to where we've come from. So, what is the same? What is different? Um, so we're trying to work on these kind of general themes and that's what I was interested in and from my work at the beginning I was always interested in um, these general themes um, and more directly the drives of men. Um, why, why we do things, why we, um, for, for example farmers, you know there's the the soil to make money, obviously, to try and survive, but the time we spend with our family and it's trying to achieve something, trying to do something, but also the failures of that. When we, when we win, when we succeed, but also when we fail in this, um, you know, living in, in the both worlds with this fight on between failing and, and winning. So that's what I went to Jakarta for, um, to just to investigate that a bit more. So, as you can see, we, this is Gabby again in the middle with the curly hair. She features in the little animation that we made. So, basically, we walked around the kampung and interviewed um, people and asked them, why are they important? Why, what, why do they do things? Why, what makes them important to their family? What makes them important to Indonesia? And it was interesting with the responses we, we had there. You know, some people were oh, not, not really interested in Indonesia, but, you know, it's all about family. And... So we see some differences and some similarities between um, myself, you know, interested in family and, and not. And um, so this is the, the group our, of our expedition. Um, little Nick and Rob and Liz and Lucero in the, in the middle. And he's also in the video. Perhaps a good place to go now is the video. Ya kan? Dan saya pun punya usaha banyak untuk anak saya dan cucu. I have, I have, I have one son. I have one son. If my son asks something, and I, I can give to my son, so I feel I am important. Yeah. See, we ask questions. Why, what makes them? Why the, I think, what are they up to? What are they doing? What, what are they important? But also, if they've ever heard of their cultural background of um, the Wayang Kulit, the these stories of the Wayang stories and what um, was used in the past to educate their children, tell them about life and stuff like that. So, and and was to our surprise, um, most of them had um, had heard of it, but didn't know much about it at all. So um, that. Um, led into, I guess, the, the, the food cart that was changed into a mobile um, shadow puppet um, display and, and with that, with the animation, I just used the animation to put over the top of the interviews that we did just to show it back to them, basically showing them back their identity and um, a reflection of themselves and, and a little bit about you know, their, their past, you know, the wine call it the um, shadow puppets. Yeah, so um, that's probably just about time anyway, eh? Yeah. So thank you for listening and thanks for coming.